Howdy folks, Roach here. This is the latest video uh, in the Recon series that I titled um, Penetrating uh, Hillary Sovereign Immunity. Now I debated whether or not to make this video because it's sort of like handing razor blades to two-year-olds. Um, it, it could be very dangerous. But given the, what's going on in France right now and in Europe, and given the fact that there's a lot of people in this country right now who believe that there are uh, people walking around that are uh, above the law, and that the mechanism of justice and the government systems are unable to handle uh, you know, these particular quote-unquote criminal and treasonous actors. It's technically a misnomer, uh, sovereign immunity is. Okay, and, and it's born out of our misunderstanding of what has occurred in this country and in the world uh, with respect to world governments and our systems of law. And it's that misunderstanding that has is, is led to uh, you know, certain problems um, that right now are, are, are coming to a head. Now, the system is having a hard time actually dealing with this because, uh, quite frankly, uh, the amount of awareness that's taking place with respect to the Internet and with respect to the availability of knowledge. And uh, the, the media right now is working overtime to try to get people back under uh, this, this illusion. Uh, and, and they're not really, uh, they're not being very successful at it. Uh, there are a lot of angry people out there. Okay, there's a lot of people getting hurt. A lot of this is tr completely unnecessary. Uh, this has less to do with bad people out there committing crimes and hurting you as much as it is us being unable to understand what's, what, what's truly going on and truly what we did to ourselves. Okay, it is our responsibility to know these things. Uh, they have been trying to teach us these things, but we really haven't been listening. And I have some examples where I'll actually show you where, where they're actually trying to show us these things. But in one sense, half of the population uh, wants to remain asleep, and the other half wants, you know, or, or just have this, this massive thirst for knowledge. But understand, the metaphor that's used is red pill, blue pill. Um, where the red pill people, they, you know, they want to go down the rabbit hole and they want to find out uh, what happened and what they did and, and what's going on. And the other people want to say, no, 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 don't, don't bother me with that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to hear that stuff. Don't, don't, don't talk to me about that. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I want my reality just the way it is. I'm, I'm completely comfortable. So in one sense, the media has a problem. Uh, they have to address the people that are awake or are awakening, and then they have to arrest the people that are still asleep. Um, it can be very uncomfortable, okay? So, but understand something. Red pilling is only the beginning of the process. Uh, often in the beginning of the process, one of the first reactions is uh, rebellion, um, revolt, uh, anger, and vengeance. Uh, there's not a lot of people out there that are talking about the end point here and, and, and telling people, hey, wait a minute, relax here. There's a happy ending here. Okay, there's not a lot of people. There's a lot of people feeding fear. There are a lot of people feeding uh, uh, division and, and a lot of people that are talking about revolt. And, and, and all that's going to do is hurt people. Okay, we don't have much to do except simply changing our perception a bit, and and and, and at, at which point we become more responsible. Uh, we know what's happening, uh, and we know what we're required to know and do in order to fix that. Okay, so with respect to uh, uh, you know the concept of of somebody um, uh, being above the law. Um, People use the word sovereign, okay, and I'm not talking about sovereign citizen, okay. That's actually an insane concept because you're either sovereign or you're citizen. Uh, one is bound to a contract, one is not. Uh, however, the term citizen here in the United States has actually uh, been redefined to mean something altogether different. And, you know, uh, I might go into that. I go into that in, in other videos, but let's let's focus on sovereignty and and this idea of that 
that we're going to penetrate Hillary Clinton's uh, sovereign immunity because it, it does appear that she is above the law. And I want to show you, uh, you have to know what it is that you're talking about to realize uh, that there's a little trick here and it's incumbent on you to know that trick. Okay, once you know the trick, then then things become a little clear. Now, I understand that President Trump here in the United States would like to restore lawful government. I say, great plan. I'm totally with that. Uh, however, if he's going to uh, restore lawful government and he's going to hand the power back to the people, those people have to be in a position to act in accordance with a lawful government. And unfortunately, folks, I don't think there's a lot of people out there that truly understand what their responsibilities are. Everybody thinks that, oh, okay, my actual duty ends when I cast my vote. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that is only one small aspect of your responsibility within a, a, a lawful government. I don't care where it's at. Okay. Now, if you need some help, there's a little book here. It's called Citizen Rule Book, Jury Handbook. Okay. Um, it, it, you can find it on the internet uh, for free. Uh, I ordered a, a number of these booklets and I hand them out to people. And it, it really will show you uh, exactly what the Founding Fathers uh, came up with originally and why it's such a wonderful thing. Now, there's a lot of patriots out there that call themselves true patriots and they're fighting for something, yet they haven't ever read the Declaration of Independence, or they might have read it in the past when they were young, or the, uh, the U.S. Constitution or the Bill of Rights, uh, and, and they have no idea, and a lot of them haven't even done this. They call themselves patriots. How can you be a patriot if you don't actually know what it is that you're fighting for, or you're resisting, or, or, or that, that you're endeavoring to, uh, to return to? Because if you don't know what this is, then you can't call yourself a patriot. You're, you're a follower and you're confused. Um, so I, I would suggest that if you have not uh, actually read these documents and you don't know what's in there, um, that I would suggest that if you don't know what's in there, you're liable to hurt yourself and hurt others in, in, in ways that you probably don't intend. Now, I know most of you mean well. Okay, and uh, you have an idea uh, uh, of what it is that you want, uh, but make sure that it's it's in line with the law and, and not in in line with something else. Uh, there's a lot of people with vengeance in them. There's a lot of people that want payback, um, and I, I want I, I want to explain to people that just simply vengeance here, bloodshed, fighting, uh, and and some of the stuff that's going on in in, in Europe right now, okay, these these people are serious, okay, and and the people in government better start paying attention, or a lot of people are going to get hurt. Okay, uh, some of this stuff is not going to be uh, 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 solvable. The the system as it stands right now cannot deal with the level of awakened citizenry that is suddenly cropped up. They need to recognize that their system is failing, and and. We have to come to a point of evolution, not just our, our system of, of control um, or, or our, our you know, system of governance, uh, but also who we are and our own self-control, because that's more important. Okay, so uh, with that, let's, let's start approaching you know, the concept of, uh, of sovereign immunity and with that, I think the uh, first thing we need to do is actually look at um, the, uh, the word sovereign. Okay, uh, This is from dictionary.com. Uh, it's a noun. It says a monarch, a king, a queen, or other supreme leader. Supreme. Okay, A person who has supreme power or authority. Mm, supreme. A group or body of persons or a state having sovereign authority. Hmm. Now, there's a word in there called supreme, right? Uh, we know what it means with respect to tacos and pizzas, um, and, you know, we might have a pretty good idea, but I need to make sure that you do. So let's, let's take a look at uh, uh, supreme, okay? It's an adjective. It says highest in rank, authority, paramount, sovereign, hmm. chief, two, 
the highest of the highest quality, degree, character, importance, etc., as in supreme courage. Three, greatest, utmost, extreme, like in supreme disgust, or, you know, su supremely wonderful. Okay? Again, this is from dictionary.com, and these are the definitions. Okay? So now we're talking about something that's of the highest. Okay? We're talking about a sovereign, the king. Okay? Now, in our system here in the United States, okay, uh, born out of a lot of trial and error, uh, a lot of trial by combat, a lot of lawful precedent, okay, the Founding Fathers came up with something that was actually pretty cool. Okay? So let's, uh, let's get to that. Oop. Let's see here. Not finding it here. Sovereign, he needs to go away. There we go. Declaration of Independence. Okay, so let's read because there's some important things with respect to sovereignty here, okay? So it says, the Declaration of Independence, okay, now, he says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Okay, there are two things here. One, I said unalienable rights. I didn't say unalienable rights. I said unalienable. Okay, um, here's some extra credit. Find out what a lien is and why unalienable is the correct uh, uh, phraseology, not unalienable okay unalienable uh, means that you can't have a lien filed against your property what property are you talking about your body those rights are unalienable meaning that they can't be taken from you they're a part of you you have arms legs uh, you, you have a mind you have eyes ears these are just character inherent characteristics uh, within you these are rights Okay, um, there's no piece of paper that grants you these rights. These come from being who you are. Okay, now governments are instituted among men and derive their just power f by, uh, from the consent of the governed. Okay, so the, the people consent to government. Now this was the concept that Thomas Paine and, and Thomas Jefferson uh, actually came up with. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. In, in order to have a government, that only exists by the consent of the people. Um, ask, uh, ask the people in France whether that or not that's true right now. Okay, they're tearing that place apart. Um, you know, the, the, I, uh, there is a, a quote from the movie Dune, uh, written by Frank Herbert, where he says, he that can, uh, and, and the leading character, uh, Paul Muad'Dib, uh, says this, he says, he that can destroy a thing controls a thing, okay? But I would suggest that, hey, let's not destroy it if we don't have to, okay? So the concept here is this. Every man have has inalienable rights, or unalienable rights. And if, as long as they are not infringing on the rights of others, uh, they can exercise those rights. They're plenary rights, or they're supreme rights. It's supreme power under the law. Okay? And, and that's where, uh, that's where uh, the idea of sovereignty comes from. Okay. Now, the first, uh, it, 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 the first case ever ruled on by the Supreme Court, and I'm not talking about the Supreme Court under the Constitution, because there was a Supreme Court under the Articles of Confederation, okay, before the Constitution, uh, uh, you know, because the Constitution was to form a more perfect union. Well, there was a union there before. Okay, there was a United States there before. And the first case that they ruled on, and, and oddly enough, a lot of, uh, a lot of people in, who study law think that there was uh, um, uh, another case that's first, but the first case actually discussed the fact that states themselves in, 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 
either the national government or the state government itself um, doesn't by itself have sovereignty and it does not usurp the sovereignty of the individual man. Okay, so it's the individual man who's most powerful, then it's the state, then it's the, the national government. That is the, that is the model that the founders actually, uh, actually came up with. Now, is that what's going on right now? Um, no. No, it's not. Okay, it's not. Okay, so we're, I'm going to go into that here. So let me see if I can get this one to close off close down there we go all right so initially okay uh, man lives under the law okay and when I say law I mean real law I mean like physics law okay the law of contracts how contracts work okay uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction right the created is never more powerful than its creator right if you ask permission it's assumed you need permission these elements of basic real law have been uh, tested over time and have been established as as precedent meaning that hey we have tested as as a human race how, what these principles are and we know how they work Okay, so there's no reason on some of these things to actually question. The, this is what's called settled law. Okay, the idea of individual sovereignty is settled law. Okay, uh, but with that sovereignty comes an amount of responsibility. Why? Well, because to exercise rights comes with responsibility. You can't just do whatever it is that you want. If you infringe on the rights of another, Okay, you have a responsibility to make that person that you violated whole. That's your responsibility. There are duties that come with being sovereign. Okay, so initially we uh, we lived under the law. Okay, so later, and I will. Let's see here. Okay, then somebody said, hmm. And I will go into when this happened uh, later. Okay, uh, then they came up with something called fiction of law. Okay, and initially fiction of law was actually created to uh, to complement real law. Okay, and there are some advantages to operating in a fiction of law. Uh, one, um, it, it's sort of like playing Monopoly, okay? If you go bankrupt in Monopoly, you're not really bankrupt. It's funny money, okay? So uh, the, the, the punishments are can be mitigated. Not only that, but it has more flexibility uh, for you to adjust certain things. Okay, but originally what happened, what they did was they created this system uh, uh, called a fiction of law, and they made it complementary, meaning that if you killed somebody in, in, in real law, there were punishments for that. Okay, and so what they did is they mimicked that same, that same thing in the fiction of law and made them equal. Okay, and that's complementary. Okay, so, so everything that was in law. Now, at that point in time, okay, uh, let's get to, let's get to, let me see if I can uh, get to the next one here. Sorry about that, I'm still learning the interface. Okay. All right. So then what they did Okay, is is they created a entity, okay? that mimicked us, okay? Because fictions of law are fictions, okay? So they needed fictional entity to which the fiction of the law could apply, right? So then what the idea was is once you got to that point, uh, 
you would place yourself within that entity. So then those fictions of law then apply to you in that suit. Now, at that time, you always had remedy and recourse to the law, meaning that what? Hey, wait a minute. If I'm playing Monopoly, one day I might just say, hey, I don't want to play Monopoly anymore. Uh, judge me against the law. Okay, and at that time, at that time, uh, we had courts of law, and then you could remedy back to your base state, uh, or you take that little green suit off. Okay, so that's what re remedy and recourse is. It, you you can get back to real law. Okay, so instead of being judged in a fiction of law in a procedural or administrative court, you then reverted back to a court of law. Okay, which which was real. Okay, so you had that power. So then, as time went on, they decoupled the law from the fiction, the, the decoupled the fiction of law from the law. Okay, they slowly decoupled it. Okay, so then the fictions of law started expanding. Now, they did this slowly, so if there were still people around here who knew what remedy and recourse was, then they, uh, then yeah, they, the, 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 uh, the administrative courts would behave like a court of law. But then it was always incumbent on you to know what your remedy and recourse of the law was. Now, once they decoupled that, um, that gave them a lot more flexibility. Okay, so slowly, like the whole boiling of the frog thing, they, they gradually changed the fictions of the law to, to, to in essence, uh, be almost contradictory to real law in many respects, right? So that if, you, if you're obeying the fiction of law, right, the statutes or the regulation or code, that, that actually uh, puts you... Uh, doing things that are actually against the law. But because there were no courts of law out there, uh, you, you, you could do those sorts of things because the fiction of law wouldn't prosecute you for that. Why? Because they defined what would be prosecuted and what was not uh, being prosecuted. So slowly, what they, what they did was, then they sort of concealed the whole real law thing entirely. <laughs> Right, so nowadays that's what we we use primarily um, um, administrative and procedural courts that really have that aren't truly courts of law at all. Okay, and and it's the, the government itself is actually just writing code and regulations and statutes. Oh, they they call it law, but these are fictions of law, and it's born out of the theory of legal positivism. And it's sort of like this. Uh, I, I mean, it's the difference between man's law and God's law. God's law is supreme. Okay, man's law is not. So what they've done is they've slowly convinced us that man's law is supreme over God's law. And, and eliminated the mechanism by which we can actually remedy back to a court of law. Now, whose fault is that? It's ours. We've always retained the power to, uh, to uh, convene a, a court of law. But we don't do that anymore. Uh, largely because, one, we're not taught to. Uh, our, our churches have been attacked. Our, our educational systems have been attacked. Um, we haven't handed the, the, this knowledge to our children from our parents. So, therefore, we don't even know that, hey, wait a minute, the power is, has always been there with us. Okay? So, you know, these are, these are the things that, uh, uh, um, you know, this is what's taking place right now. We have administrative and procedural courts that cannot prosecute a real criminal under real law. That's a problem, folks. Because if there are people out there who know that they enjoy the right to uh, remedy and due process of law, okay? In 1999, a Secret Service agent named Wayne Borg, on my front porch, asked me, he says, you understand that due process does not apply here. Hmm. That's when I got my red pill. It took me seven years to figure out how, what, what he was doing with that. And so later in 2012, two high-ranking uh, 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 
uh, agents from the U.S. Treasury basically told me that the system does not provide uh, for due process of law and does not provide remedy and recourse to the law. Okay? So we're in the realm of legal. We're not in the realm of lawful. Okay? So in order to understand lawful, okay, uh, I've got a little video. It'll help you understand uh, the difference between between lawful and legal. Okay, here it is. All right, you see that? Need to see it again? Hmm? All right, just so you understand the difference here. All right. Law is supreme. Okay. Now, with respect to Hillary Clinton, uh, you can love her, you can hate her, but one thing you're going to have to appreciate is that I don't think, uh, as far as personages out there, that there is anybody that has actually showed us how screwed up and off the program our system has become. Okay? Uh, Hillary Clinton understands remedy and recourse to the law. That's all she's done. The problem is, is we don't have courts to prosecute her for that. That's a big problem because nobody wants to say that. So they all dance around. They don't want you to know that, wait a minute, you're, you're on a different set of, of rules. You're operating in a fiction, and she's operating in what's real. Now, if she takes money from you, well, you got to understand that your money is colorable. It's a fiction of law, too. It's monopoly money. And if people take monopoly money, are they really taking money from you? Is that actually a crime? Not only that, but uh, if I go and I say, well, you know, here's my wallet. I'm going to give you my wallet with all my money in it, right? And then you take the wallet. Then I come back and I, and I, come back and I say, hey, you know, you stole my wallet. And, and then I go, and, you know, I go into a court and say, hey, hey, you know, this guy stole my wallet. Do I have a case? If I gave you my wallet, can I claim that you've stolen it? No. Why? Because it's not a crime. Worse than that, in our current system, we don't realize that we have literally made ourselves slaves. Okay? Um, and all, all the government is doing is, is honoring that. Okay? We don't have the right to self-determination. Okay? We gave away all of our constitutionally protected rights, all of our plenary rights under the law. We gave them away to be that, in that little green entity, right? The little, little green entity there. Right, to be inside that that entity, we get we get civil rights, not constitutionally protected rights. I mean, I talked to the ACLU and I asked the lady there. I says, uh, uh, given that I enjoy constitutionally protected rights, uh, what exactly do you protect? And she says, oh well, we, and, and she was very specific. We deal only in the fighting and protection of civil rights. Now, she knew the difference. The fact is, as most people in this country do not know that there's a difference between constitutionally protected rights and civil rights. Civil rights are civil based on a contract. We agreed. Technically, we handed them our wallet. Now, all of a sudden, we say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, they stole that wallet. <laughs> no, 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 no. You need to realize how you give that away. Now, in other videos, I explain how that works uh, and how that's done. But technically, that's, that's uh, uh, where we're at right now. How, how far, um, you know, how, how, far or how far back do we have to go? Uh, to see when when we sort of you know left the program, um, well, this guy, right? That was a pretty watershed moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened to him? Hmm? What happened to him? Are you telling me that all of the secret people and all the law enforcement in this country, all the investigations by Congress? 
all of the information and all the people on this planet couldn't figure out how this guy got shot and who did it? Huh? You telling me that? And if you do enjoy constitutionally protected rights, how come we hadn't gotten to the bottom of this yet? Sounds to me like we don't have as much power as we think we did, we do, and it looks like we've given it away. I could be wrong here, folks, but you know what? We don't know what happened to him. That happened a long time ago. But really, was was at the start of it. That should be evidence right there that, wait a minute, we're off the program here. right? You, you've got people here, and people are yelling and screaming, hey, and, and, and nobody's being prosecuted. Well, why? Because you know what? You think the Supreme Court's going to tell you, hey, we don't have any real true authority here? Why? Because, you know, we, we, we don't have consent? All right. All right. This guy here, Thomas Jefferson, pretty much knew what the what the the problem was. Okay, and, and this is a statement that he made with respect to slavery. Okay, because slavery would actually become a pretty important thing. And this is what he said. He says the day is not distant when we must bear and adopt. Um, the abolition of slavery, or worse, will follow. Okay. Now, this guy owned slaves. Okay. He realized that you don't do that. That owning slaves, although uh, a majority of people at the time uh, believed that it was eh, okay, uh, may maybe not a majority, maybe 50-50, okay, uh, maybe most people thought it was abhorrent. Uh, it is a violation of law. It's, it's technically... A, uh, 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 you don't own another uh, another man or woman as property, period. End of story. If you do, you're breaking the law. That means you're creating victims and justice will be marshaled against you. This guy knew that it was a problem and knew it was something that we would have to correct. And did we? Hmm? All right. Okay, all right, so let's, let me see if I can, okay, that's him. Okay. All right, so. I'm missing one here. All right, so. The 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, you have to realize here. So let's read that. It says, uh, Section 1, neither slavery, uh, and, and this, uh, uh, it says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for crime, whereof, uh, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States. Okay? Uh, section 2, Congress shall have the power to enforce uh, this article by appropriate legislation. Okay. So, uh, that came about after this guy. Okay. You don't know who this guy is. He was a president. And uh, when he retired, uh, all hell broke loose. Okay. He wasn't a very good president because he couldn't actually reconcile it. Uh, we were dealing with slavery. Uh, and um, the southern states felt that it was their right to do that. Okay, so there was a lack of statesmanship. Uh, this actually blew up. If you read the Wikipedia entry on James Buchanan, uh, you'll find out exactly what was going on with that. Okay, and that precipitated the 13th Amendment. Now, notice it says involuntary servitude. Guess what it doesn't ban? Voluntary servitude. If you want to volunteer yourself as a slave, 13th Amendment doesn't ban that. The power 
perspective at the time, that a majority of the Americans in this country did not understand why it was such a horrible thing that one man owned another man as property. How best to understand that concept than to truly make, make us all a slave? We know what it is now to be a slave because that's where we're at. And you guys can yell and scream about having constitutionally protected rights all you want. Uh, you go ahead and try it. As, a, as one that's actually disobeyed a, uh, a federal district court judge back in 2012, um, I know what I'm talking about. Notice that I'm still walking around here. Okay, I went to federal court without an attorney. Okay? I kind of know what I'm talking about. Okay? So they don't want to actually tell you this because they believe that you, you're not in a position to actually handle this information. I mean, seeing what's going on in France right now, I mean, uh, I, I, I think they have real reason to be concerned. Okay? In, in, in this country, we need to, uh, you know, come up with a, with a real solution to this. All right, so we've got these people that are wandering around here. And uh, we think they're above the law, right? When, when technically what happened was we chose to enter into and remain part of a fiction of law system, okay? And we're seeing how that right now has been exploited by people against other people. Okay, um, these people have sovereign immunity, right? Or basically saying, "Hey, you know, I enjoy. I have my rights. I'm exercising my rights, and your system cannot prosecute me under the law." And they're they're at a loss. They're right. They can't say that they're right. And this is what's leading to all of the dancing around in the legislature right now. All these investigations, right? They're perpetual investigation nothing's nothing's happening with that respect now if they can get people who are confused put them in jail hey that's fine then they do that but there's certain people that enjoy sovereign immunity here meaning that hey wait a minute they have the right to remedy and recourse to the law yet if our system does is not a lawful system one because it lost the consent of the people back in 1861 and it doesn't derive its just power by the consent of the governed then it's not a lawful system, it's a fiction of law. Until we, uh, until we people reestablish a lawful government with the help of uh, President Trump, then we're not going to know how to actually prosecute real, you know, uh, real crime. But again, it, 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 is it really treason? Right? Well, technically, it's a livestock control system. I mean, the livestock, I mean, are, are they injured by the farmer? No, not really. They're livestock. But you want to stop being livestock, and if you want to, uh, you know, exercise your true rights, and you're going to have to learn the law, you're going to have to understand what it is that you're, what's, you have to learn the responsibilities of uh, uh, what it is that, uh, you know, you're doing here. These people here, they enjoy remedy and recourse to the law. We, we haven't answered that. So now we've got people that are injuring, really injuring people, okay? Now, if I make you my slave, if I make myself your slave, then you can do anything to me that I want. If I call myself a dead man, shoot, have you killed me? Right? And we blame these people for doing bad things when really it's us that are doing bad things. Now, wait. If children are getting injured here, okay, that's something else. That's something else entirely. But again, we're in a situation now, and there's talk that uh, Guantanamo Bay, that there's modifications being made to the court martial to go after private citizens in matters of real law. These are uh, attempting to use martial law, okay, uh, to, to prosecute criminals for real crimes. 
well, why can't we just use that with our systems? Well, our systems can't do that because it's not lawful yet. We need to make those systems lawful, and that requires us. That requires an education from us. Until then, these people, these, these three people here, right, they're actually showing us how broken the system is. Why? Because they're walking around apparently above the law. We need to return to a system of, of law. Now, if we don't do that, we have another system of law that's coming in here, and it's called Sharia law. Now, that's a, that's a law system based on contract, okay? And it is a civilized system of law, okay? It's also a very effective ma uh, livestock control system. And if we don't answer that and come up with a mechanism by which we can prosecute people that injure people in our country and create, uh, create victims, perpetrate crimes, then then we're going to be supplanted by another system that actually is based on the law. Now, if you don't like the whole concept of Sharia law, hey, I'm with you. But unless you comport yourself in, 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 in a lawful manner and learn how to convene a court of law, then Sharia law ha has a great chance of actually becoming the law of land in this country. And there is nothing that this legal system can do about it. Right? So I wanted to show you a video clip with respect to choice. And this is from, this is from the movie Matrix. And this is a scene where the architect actually explains how the Matrix actually works. And it's based on voluntary uh, choice okay so let's uh, let's watch that real quick as I was saying she stumbled upon a solution whereby nearly 99% of all test subjects accepted the program as long as they were given a choice even if they were only aware of the choice at a near unconscious level while this answer functioned it was obviously fundamentally flawed thus creating the otherwise contradictory systemic anomaly that if left unchecked might threaten the system itself. Ergo, those that refuse the program while a minority, if unchecked, would constitute an escalating probability of disaster. All right. So what's Hillary Clinton? Well, she's an anomaly in the system. We all believe the system is, is a lawful system when really it's a legal system. She knows the law. We don't. Uh, there are people in government. I imagine that President Trump knows the difference. He, he's, he's got a real problem because there is a, a, a number of people out here that really don't know the difference between legal and lawful. They haven't studied this little booklet. They don't know, they don't even know what's in, in the founding uh, documents. They don't know what their responsibility as a juror is. They don't know what due process of law is. Uh, half the time, they don't know what li rights are being violated. Like technically on the internet, uh, you guys know what right is being violated when uh, Twitter goes through and or Google uh, monitors everything you do on the internet. What what rights being violated? Right. What 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 number of the amendment? Because it's not the Fourth Amendment. They're not violating your right to privacy. That's not the right. That's Fourth Amendment. You're saying, what? Of course they're violating our privacy. No, no, they're, they're violating your Third Amendment rights. Okay? It, re realize that, that Google, Facebook, and, and, and Twitter were all born out of DARPA. Right? Uh, DARPA is a military organization. Right? Dar DARPA is military. Right. And so what is the Third Amendment? Well, the Third Amendment uh, uh, protects you from involuntarily having troops quartered on your property. Right. And, and why why were they doing that? Well, uh, the British were putting troops on people's property so that they could surveil them and keep track of them. Right. But here we think, oh, hey, we're having our uh, right of privacy. No, no, we're not. We have a troop in our stuff on our electronic device watching everything. What he sees when he's there is not a violation of privacy. Why? Because it's a more important. See, that's why it's the Third Amendment, not the Fourth Amendment. First things first, right? Freedom of speech, that's number one. Protecting uh, freedom of assembly, freedom to petition the government, a whole number of things. 
right? One, two, two, the right to defend yourself using any any means uh, available, right? Which includes firearms. But it doesn't stop with firearms, however. Okay? Then three. Hmm. Three is to protect you from the government surveilling you. Then you have right to privacy, right? To be secure in your per, uh, your papers and uh, personal effects, right? There's a, a number of these things. But, you know, everybody says, oh, well, you know, the Third Amendment, it's sort of like, you know, the bastard amendment. Um, you know, no, nobody even falls at it. You know, it's really absurd. Really? No, it's not absurd. Let's keep the government from putting uh, uh, surveillance equipment or people Right, and, and there's no difference between putting a camera up on a traffic light than it is to station a troop in your backyard or in your living room watching everything that you're doing. There's no difference to that. The fact that he sees what it is that you're doing is not a right, a violation of your right to privacy. It's a violation of him being there in the first place. That's more important. So if you go to the, you, you, even if you went into the court court of law and you said, hey, you know, they're violating your privacy, he said, sorry, I uh, know, bye, go away. No, you're violating the fact that you can't put, you can't quarter a troop in your, uh, you know, in your home, on your property. That's the real law there. Do we understand these concepts? No. Do they teach them in school? No. Do they teach them in the churches? No. Do we hand them down from child to, uh, uh, from, from parent to child? No, we don't. We're not even aware of it. We don't even realize it. Right? And I'll leave you with this little metaphor. When I was young, we used to play tag. And it was a lot more fun to play tag in the living room uh, when we, we used to play f the floor is lava. Meaning that the floor, we decided and we agreed as kids to say, hey, wait a minute, the floor is lava and you can't touch the floor. Otherwise, you know, you're dead. Or it. Okay? So we hop around on the furniture playing tag and stuff and, you know, uh, try... Uh, Try not to touch the floor because the floor is lava, right? Now, you imagine playing the floor is lava game for several generations to the point where we forget that lava, uh, that the floor, uh, we don't even know that the lava is floor. And we think, oh, hey, well, you know, that's real. That's real. It's lava. Don't, don't step off the furniture. So all of a sudden, mom comes home, walks across the floor. What are you going to do as a kid? Tell mom, hey, wait a minute. Um, you can't walk across the floor. The floor is lava. <laughs> no, uh, she's probably going to uh, she's probably going to discipline you for being on the furniture. All right? Why? Because she has plenty of rights. She's sovereign. You, you're a kid. All right? So if, if we want to penetrate Hillary Clinton's sovereignty, sovereign immunity, uh, we have to have a mechanism in order to to, to do that. She is to be tried as a sovereign in a sovereign court of law. We don't have that here. I suggest we uh, come up with those. Right? There's a number of, uh, of ways we can do that. We learn how to be jurors. We learn the law. We know what's the difference between right and wrong. We can't even tell the truth from fiction. We sit here and watch TV and we think that that's true. Right? And, and here's the odd notion. Right, a lot of us, you know, in, in one side of our face, we'll say, "Hey," in one side of our mouth, we'll say, "Oh, you know, it, it, it's fake, it's fake media." But until we actually see the story in this fake media, that we don't even take it as true. Oh, and that, now nah, that's just some wingnut out there doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, now, if if you go to an attorney. And you ask an attorney, hey, uh, is what Roe's saying, is that true? And um, usually what you'll get uh, is, oh, he's crazy. He's crazy. They won't deny it. They'll just say I'm crazy. Why? Because they're not going to let you in on that. This livestock control, man, uh, control program is to control you. Right? They're, gonna, uh, they're a mechanism of that control. Right? They're not going to hand a two-year-old child a razor blade. Why? Because you're going to hurt yourself with that. You're going to think, oh, well, I'm above the law. No, 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 no. You're not above the law. You create injury in somebody else, you can be prosecuted. Not within the system. But the day is coming where that will have to take place. Right? Somebody's going to have to, at the top, be it 
President Trump or Congress to admit that our system is off the rails and that we're going to have to reinstantiate uh, re lawful government. We're not going to do that without first understanding what it is. Otherwise, you're going to have people wandering around that you're not going to be able to do anything with. And for you to actually attempt to prosecute them using the system as it is right now is a violation of the law. And I, for one, will not stand for it. Hillary Clinton, I don't care what you say. I don't care how bad whatever it is that she uh, she's uh, uh, alleged to have done is. She will enjoy remedy and recourse to the law. And she will enjoy due process of law. Because I enjoy those rights, and I will, I will not tolerate her rights being violated. Nor will I tolerate the violation of anybody else's rights. Now, if you want to give all those, your rights away, hey, so be it. However, that's not Hillary Clinton. She enjoys plenary rights. And either we comport ourselves strictly according to the law, create and convene courts of law to prosecute her properly under the law. Or forget about it. Just forget about it. Because I don't want lawlessness. Absolutely not. And I, I don't care how bad, you know, quote unquote, the, 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 the treason is, the sedition that you think actually happened. She just didn't bind herself to the contract. She's not part of the agreement. You can't make her. You can't make her play Monopoly if she doesn't want to play Monopoly. You got four people sitting at a table. Three people want to play poker. One guy says, no, I'm sitting out. Three people says, hey, ante up. The other guy says, no, I ain't playing poker. The three people that are playing poker cannot force the person not playing poker to ante up. So we will not force Hillary Clinton to be prosecuted under an administrative or procedural court system that lacks the lawful authority to prosecute her in law. We either figure out how to convene courts of law, and if 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 uh, President Trump can do that through through, uh, but that's that's not a solution here, folks. Right? To to say, oh, okay, well, wait a minute. Uh, if somebody's out there that enjoys sovereign immunity, we're gonna send them off to. It doesn't work. A temporary band aid solution. Number of layers of the United States of America uh, doesn't have, uh, you know, that doesn't derive its power uh, uh, by the consent of the people. I mean, it's it, and technically it's a fiction of. On top of that, you've got uh, got treaty with other other nations who, whose governments are just as you know based on fiction as much as ours. Then you've got the United Nations, which is another layer of fiction. None of that's real. Authority, and they know it. And so you've got the EU over there thinking that, and they're getting all tough with the people. People are saying, oh, really? Hey, well, eating your butt out in the street here. Right? You know, the tyrants are the ones that they have forgotten the law also. Okay? It's not just the people who are confused. We've been in this system so long that people think that man decides what is and what isn't with respect to the law. That is not true, folks. Absolutely not true. They don't know any more than the confused masses out there setting fire to everything and, and, and throwing rocks, getting gassed. I mean, you got people losing their eyes because the police think it's okay. Hey, uh, we're just going to fire on these people. It's a civil disturbance. The government has no business being a civilian. It's not pretty. Figure it out. Otherwise, you're going to have nothing but a smoking hole here. There are going to be some people at the top hanging from trees. 
And there's no reason for that whatsoever. None. We all need to learn what our responsibility is. All right? So, uh, with that, I'm Roach, and we will talk to you later.